Overstimulation is killing our brains. We all want to be like John Wick. I mean, except without all the killing. Like we want to be people of focus, commitment, and sheer will to complete every task that we put our minds to. But in order to understand why we procrastinate, we first have to look at our brain and how it works. So we've all heard of dopamine, right? Dopamine gets released in our brain basically as a motivator. Right? So when you look up at the clock on a Friday and you see it's four o'clock and you finish work at five, dopamine gets released to give you that little extra push to make it to five o'clock. Same thing when you know you're gonna get paid. Like, you know there's a reward, so your brain gives you a bit of a, a push to go and get that reward. You know, you get dopamine when you see that Facebook notification or that text. It gives you that little bit of motivation to open it and see what's happening. Like, you know, when you get a notification and you get that feeling and you're like, oh, like, you know, let's see who said what or whatever it is. Like, that's dopamine being released. That's also why it's so easy to stay on social media. That constant scrolling is so easy and seeing posts and new posts and videos is, you know, what feeds our brain dopamine because we think that the longer we scroll, that there will be a reward at the end of it, whether that's in likes, a notification or somebody messaging you or whatever it is. But in all reality, all we get is smudges on our phone and a whole lot of wasted time. Because what do likes really mean? Nothing. One thing I also found in my research is that when we eat sugar, our brain produces surges of dopamine. Like it reacts similarly when we have things like heroin and cocaine enter our body. And it's apparently because our bodies have adapted to want things that are high in calories. But now with modern food and modern technology and high calorie foods being so readily available, we don't necessarily need those things anymore, but our brains haven't had a chance to, to catch up to where we are yet. So it's like we're here and our brains are still, you know, down here and it's, it's struggling to catch up. So, you know, our brains still think that sugar is beneficial and it still releases huge amounts of dopamine whenever we have sugar and high calorie foods. That's why it seems like we're addicted to sugar and it almost seems like when you don't have it, like you're itching to get it. That's also why it's hard to resist urges to have sweet things like chocolate and you know cake and stuff like that because we've been conditioned to want and crave sugar. Like anybody who knows me knows that I'm no stranger to sugar. I used to eat terribly. I used to have junk food, you know, pop, like regularly. Like I wasn't, I just wasn't eating good at all. Over the past few months, I have made a conscious effort to cut back on sugar. But you know, one thing that's crazy to me is how powerful sugar is. It's literally this little white grain. And that's the difference between tasting chocolate chips versus carrots. Obviously that's like exaggerated, but you get what I'm saying. High fat and high sugar foods are engineered to get us addicted so that when you go back to the store, instead of getting lettuce or carrots, we get chips or chocolate. Like there's a reason nobody's addicted to lettuce because it doesn't release dopamine in your brain when you eat more of it. So there isn't any motivation for you to eat it. Real quick, I just wanted to jump in here and say just now, like you probably saw that B-roll shot of me eating the chocolate chip cookie and like no word of a lie, like I ate the cookie and I only wanted to eat one cause I didn't want to eat it, you know, for nothing, right? So I just ate it for B-roll. And literally, like, I wanted to have another one right after that. And it's like, but right now, like, I just had that lettuce and I don't want to have any more lettuce. So do what you want with this information. It's just what I'm saying. And yeah, back to the video. Just like I said before, when we eat sugar, dopamine gets released. So that's why when you have one piece of chocolate, it motivates you to have another. And then before you know it, you've finished half of what you have and then you start to feel like shit. We have to do better at staying away from sugar because there are literally no benefits to it. Like all you're doing is making it harder for your body to be healthy. But back to this whole dopamine thing and let me switch the subject away from sugar. Like, I also think that's why I like action movies so much. I feel like I've conditioned my brain to always look for gunshots or explosions and you know stuff like that and that might be why i find other genres of movies boring but i also love sci-fi so maybe i'm just looking too far into the topic and i'm just trying to make the video longer so it seems like i actually have something to say 
no, that can't be it. But there is one thing that I've always had a bad habit of, and that's always stimulating my brain. Like I've created this bad habit of having my iPad play something in the background, and now I feel like I can't do anything without some white noise. Like I don't think listening to things is bad, but I think it's the constant listening. Like for example, when I wash dishes, I put something on. When I'm doing laundry, I listen to something. When I'm in the shower, I listen to something. I mean, at this point, I'm surprised that I'm not listening to something while I'm sleeping. And let me be clear, it's not like I'm listening to stupid things or videos that waste my time or things that I don't even want to listen to. Like, I think I'm listening to valuable things like Jordan Peterson, Matt Diavella, or you know, somebody else and other people. But I think the problem is that I'm looking for something to listen to even when the task I'm about to do takes like five minutes. Like how bad is my mind or my brain that I can't even listen to the water running while I'm washing dishes for like five minutes without getting bored? So how am I gonna try and combat this overstimulation? Well, I'm gonna constantly work on auditing my time when I'm on my devices. I'm only gonna use them when I have to, like replying to somebody, uploading a video or something along those lines. It seems like as soon as we get bored or our brains aren't being stimulated enough, we go directly into that autopilot mode or we get that flinch that I talked about in this video right here. Like we get bored or nothing is happening, you know, in front of us. So we all reach for our phones in our pocket. We check Facebook, scroll for a bit, nothing there. We check Instagram, scroll for a bit, nothing there. We check Twitter, we scroll for a bit, there's nothing there. Then it's just constant switching from app to app, tab to tab, looking for our next hit of dopamine. So I'm gonna start using my devices with a purpose, not just to put things on for white noise and not just for something to listen to. The weather is also getting nicer, so hopefully I can go on walks or you know, shooting the basketball around or something like that, or even going on bike rides. I think one thing we have to do is take back control of our brains and stop our brains from controlling us and stop wasting all this time on quick and easy stimulation and actually live with a purpose instead of just looking for quick hits of dopamine and you know social media validation, right? Because in reality, the, all these little like short-term things, likes, comments, subscribers, it doesn't really mean anything in the long run. So I hope this video kind of opened your eyes and I hope you start using your devices with a purpose instead of just mindlessly scrolling. And above all, I hope this video brought you some value. And as always, thanks for watching.